Hi, I'm Captain Steve Chaconis, and welcome to the National Bass Fishing Show. I love using swim jigs, and you know, a lot of guys don't throw swim jigs because they don't understand how they work or why they work, but more so, they don't use them because they can't feel them. They don't vibrate, they don't shimmy, your rod's not bouncing, your line's not fluttering. You've got to be able to crawl it through, and there's nothing better than fishing grass than a swim jig. And that's because you could fish every depth. You could fish in the grass, pop it free from the grass. A lot of times you'll get strikes right there, but you could fish it over the grass. You could fish it, bounce it off wood. You could drag it down gravel. Lots of different places to fish it. I like fishing it on anywhere from 12 to 16 pound test gamma edge fluorocarbon. And that's because I can still cast it a long way on a bait caster, but I can also wind it real slow and feel those bites and snap it out of the grass. Being able to snap out of the grass is really important, whether you put a little slack and a snap of the wrist or when you, you grab a hold of the butt of the rod and snap the butt and the real part forward like that and it'll snap it out for you. But crawl it through the grass, fish it real slow, just wind it real slow and the bite will be kind of like a thump, 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 thump load and you swing set on that thing. Now, what is a swim jig? Well, a swim jig could be a lot of things. Uh, and particularly, uh, it has three features. A good one. Uh, you could use any jig that you want. One of the features is the head. You can see it's a, a thinner head. It'll come through the grass a little bit cleaner. Also has fewer fibers in the weed guard. Let me see if I can separate this for you. Fewer fibers in the weed guard. So it, it, it kind of keeps it out of the grass and out of wood, but it, it doesn't really... Uh, impede the hook set on a long cast. And the other feature is a thinner wire hook. So that thinner wire hook makes it easier to set the hook on the on the end of long cast. You could put whatever kind of trailer you put on there. Uh, you could put a, a swim bait on the back of them, a uh, small swim bait, little finesse type of deal here. Uh, you could put a bigger craw type on there. Um, you, but one of the things that I do is I, I, I you got to have a good bait keeper and a good swim jig will have one. Now, if they don't, this is a man's stone jig. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, uh, a, a skirt pattern that I create, but I also add a couple extra barbs on there. I don't want my, and that's a big thick hook. So I'm going to make shorter casts with this. This is my 16 pound test, uh, setup right here. It's a half ounce jig, but it's a thicker wire. I need, and I'm going to be thick fishing and thicker stuff, and I really need to set the hook. So what I've done is I've added a couple extra barbs there, and those barbs will keep that bait from coming off. And a little heat shrink tubing, uh, bend some uh, wire that I had left over from a spinner bait, and then I've got a bait where the trailer won't come off. Uh, the bait I'm going to use today is uh, is a standby jig that I like. I like the Ultra Vibe Speed Crawl. I like that uh, as my trailer. Uh, again, it's my uh, my skirt pattern. It's it's basically a uh, peanut butter and jelly with a black or a black and brown strip, so two strips, and then I put them in place with some wire so that the skirt doesn't come down. Everything about this jig is full contact. It's got to be perfect. You can't have a skirt coming off. You can't have baits coming off. It'll make it for a long day. Uh, we'll see how we do with with uh, with the swim jig. So stay tuned. Okay. It's a beautiful morning. Wait a minute, why am I whispering? This is fishing, this isn't golf. Hey, swim jigs, I love them. And uh, we're gonna test them out. What we have here is just a, uh, well, it's like a little drop off with a little bit of grass edge to it. And I'm just gonna kind of try to find the grass with the bait. Once I find the, the grass, then I'll just give it a little snap. Sometimes I'll let it drop. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and keep reeling it. The nice thing about uh, swim jigs is it allows you to to, to fish the whole water column. I can skim this across the water uh, on the top of the water and use it like a top water. Like I'll try to do that now, get it up real close to the surface, kind of get those legs kind of kicking, burn it through there. Or I can slow it down and drag it completely on the bottom. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm looking for grass. And when I find grass, that's where the bass are going to be. And I'm going to slow this thing down and just drag it through there. A lot of guys don't like using the swim jig because they can't feel it. It's just a, 
there's nothing vibrating there's nothing shaking you don't feel the guides in your rods rattling around and uh they just they won't uh they won't use a swim jig they won't try them and they're they're really good because they they can cover every depth every speed uh however you want to fish it it's uh it's a pretty cool bait uh prefer to fi fish milfoil because when you pop it out of the milfoil you could drop it and that's usually where there's a space and that's where the fish are going to be laying uh, but for the most part any any kind of grass that has any kind of edge and i'm looking for the deepest edge that that it has as deep as i can go i'll fish this down maybe eight ten feet deep uh and then you have to start doing football jigs and ledge fishing kind of thing but for a true swim jig i'll i'll go ahead and throw uh throw just a regular swim jig and and try to have it so it comes through grass that's what i'm really looking for when you start fishing ledges and rocks and you can go with a football jig or just about any jig that you want there's the grass right there and the bite is pretty cool too it's usually like a tap 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 and then the rod loads because they're, they're swimming up and they're swallowing it as they're as they're swimming because they use a technique called ram suction where they right before they ram something right either a bait fish or crawfish they they open their mouth and they suck it in and when they do that it's it's definitely a unique uh kind of a bite they're not slamming it so much as they're coming up behind it sucking it in and then stopping maybe turning away there's one okay there we go that didn't take very long and they they hit it pretty good they hit it pretty good all right Swim jig. I love these things. Nice little fishy. Let you go. Because you can generally feel uh, that it's gained a little bit of weight. And then you can go ahead and just, uh, from there, you can just go ahead and snap it once. And usually that grass comes off. So, like, right there, I just hit some grass. I gave it a little bit of a snap just in case I pick some up. Another little snap because it felt a little bit different. But all those snaps are starting to uh, attract fish. When you when you do that, it gets their attention. Uh, that's why a lot of times I'll make a cast to the same spot two or three times, especially if there's grass there, because a lot of times if they don't see it the first time, they might see it the second or third. And a lot of these snaps that you do tends to get their attention. So like the second or third time that you come through, they're gonna they're gonna eat it. There's one. That's what we're looking for. Ah, a little jumper here. Come on, you gonna jump again? Hey, we like to jump. We get paid by the jump, don't we? Okay. Gotta love the swim jig. Works under these conditions. You can't ask. I mean, you could use other stuff. Of course, they're gonna bite other things. But you know, you get you get a swim jig bite going. You don't need to bring out a bunch of rods and make long casts and try to figure out where the fish are going to be and just catch them that's all we're going to do we're just going to slide it over this little ridge right here it's got grass on it I'm trying to <clears throat> i got a little bit too close to it now but i'll just fish the deeper end of it and kind of cast out this time we'll cast into the wind Line it through uh, again, a, a lot of very good fishermen are hesitant to, to use a bait like this because they can't feel anything. They don't feel the, the stuff that they've trained themselves to feel, like uh, the vibration or thumping and, um, or seeing their line jump around uh, as you bring the bait in or see the rod tip vibrate. You won't see any of that with this. It just is a uh, very slow presentation, just kind of gentle winding and and uh, you have to trust your trust that the bait's doing what, what you set it up to do. So I have a lot of different craws that I can use. These are that's a, a pretty thick uh, Berkeley craw, and it's got big claws on it. Uh, this is uh, one from Mismo. It's got big claws on it, and those are those are fine. A lot of times, if I'm going real slow along the bottom, or or pitching or flipping, I'll do that with a jig. I like this one. This is a this is one that's. A, it's got some thumpers on the end of it, and it, it could get real small on you too. And it's a rage tail. It's pretty decent little bait. I cut the end of it off. But my favorite is the Ultra Vibe Speed Craw. 
this guy has, you can see, has very small uh, claws. Kind of will blend into the bait. And I have to cut off, if you look at this, this jig right here, it's got a pretty good keeper on there. So I, I'll measure it, even though I kind of know where. I want this bait to be right about there. So I want to cut off like the first, the first two sections of this bait. Uh, so it'll just barely stick out past the, um, past the, the skirt. And it just, uh, it just works better that way. They're jointed. Uh, it makes it easier to remember. So like if you're fishing all day long using the same one. So now there's my craw and I'm just going to stick it on there. Sometimes I'll, you know, tip the, uh, tip the claws with orange or chartreuse, you know, just something that, that'll give it a little bit more uh, visibility. But I really, I, I want the claws just to add just a little bit more uh, action to this bait. Come up there, come up over that barb, press down on it, and now that bait should stay on there pretty good and nice and straight. Comes out just past the skirt. And uh, we're ready to go. Fishing goes, I like to keep the rod low to the water. Um, if I, and kind of just off center uh, to my strong side. So a uh, rod in my left hand, I want the, the rod going across my body, lined up basically where I'm looking at, at my head. So I can see the rod tip just by looking straight down and not have to go left or right. Uh, I can see the line to see if something's picked it up. Um, and it gives me several options for a hook set. Most of the hook sets are going to be you wind. You always, would, when you have a moving bait, a lot of people, their first instinct is to just set the hook. But you've got to wind. Let that rod do its thing. Wind real fast. Reels now are much faster. This is a 7 to 1 reel that I'm using. So they're, they're much faster, and a couple of turns of the handle will load that rod, and then you can kind of lean into them a little bit. You don't have to snap set like a jig, because like a regular jig, because these are thinner wire hooks, and uh, they penetrate much better uh, at the end of a long cast. Plus, I'm using a uh, 12-pound test gamma fluorocarbon, edge fluorocarbon. I like that line. Doesn't stretch, has a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of casting ability does pretty well, so uh, it's it's a really good line. And I'll go up to 14 or 16 depending on how thick the grass is. But I like to start with 12. Uh, it casts a lot further, especially when you're fishing clearer water. This water today has about two to three feet of visibility. Uh, there's been a lot of rain lately. Uh, water temperature is 77 degrees, so it's cooling off from the summer high. But we still have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of way to go before we get into that where they're munching like crazy. But this is a good; these are good conditions. Slightly overcast this morning, with a uh, with pretty good visibility. Pretty good visibility, so these fish can see it from a long way. You don't have to have it on the bottom. I just bounced it off a piece of wood there. See what happens here. See if we get one to come out and play with this thing. So by having the rod sort of front and center like this gives me at least two good options for a hook set. I can either go straight up or I can go to the right. Um, harder to go to the left when you're fishing a, fishing a bait like this. Hard to go to the left. Uh, but you can certainly uh, can if you catch up to the fish quick enough and you shorten up your hook set and a lot of things you can do with experience, you can you learn how to do that. But you just try to set yourself up for a, a better hook set, depending on the cast and how you're doing, how you're doing your retrieve. You just want to set yourself up for the most success with that hook set. There we go. That guy, right when I ticked the top of the grass, he came up and got it. And a uh, thing I like about a swim jig is they're usually pretty decent fish. I mean, it's not a giant, but you know, we'll take him. Um, it's it's just one of those baits you've got to throw. You've got to throw this bait. Swimming a jig for me was was an accidental discovery. I was fishing a tournament, and on the Potomac River, it's a tidal fishery, so you have water lowering and rising, and you have to accommodate you know your baits to that. Well, the water was was uh, low when I started, so I was throwing a man's baby one minus. It's a shallow crankbait. It dives about a foot or so, and 
I was catching fish just over the tops and ripping it out of grass. And so I was doing pretty well and the tide started to come in. And when it came in, my bait wasn't getting close to the fish. I mean, the fish aren't going to rise with the water. They're going to stay, you know, right there in that grass. And I couldn't, I couldn't get any bites that way. And I said, oh, I'll just throw a jig. I'll pitch a jig. So basically out of, you know, frustration, I was throwing the jig and had no idea uh, what was going to happen next when I said, gee, the jig isn't working after one or two casts. So I start to burn it in and I was getting ready to take it off and put something else on and all of a sudden something smashed it. And it was a bigger fish than I'd been catching. I said, you know, I'm not stupid. That fish wanted that bait when it was moving. And this was like almost 30 years ago. And uh, so I go ahead and start burning that, that jig in and I upgraded my my uh, limit, uh, which was a modest 12 pound uh, limit when I start, started with that one minus and I got up to uh, 16 pounds, which put me in third place in that tournament. And it was all because I started winding that jig in and I'd never heard of anybody doing that before. So I started playing around with it, uh, figuring out which tide it was better at and how to fish it. And, um, and then all of a sudden you start seeing everybody talk about swimming jigs, uh, basically, I think in the early... 2000s when people started really talking about it and Tom Monsoor started making his own and uh, companies uh, Strike King makes a real good swim jig it's got a, uh, a flat head that's well basically a, a, a narrow head I would say it's not flat it's vertical and it has a good bait keeper on it it has a uh, uh, it has a the skirt that won't come off, you know, you got to I think they tie theirs on with wire or whatever they do They they don't come off real easy. So it's a, a pretty decent skirt and it has a thinner wire hook not too thin It won't straighten out on you, but it's thin so you could set the hook on one of these long casts You've got to be able to do that Otherwise, you know, if you use a flipping jig a lot of times it gets harder to set the hook now You can use a flipping jig and I do. I use a man's stone jig uh, quite often when I'm swimming a jig, especially if I'm s swimming around heavy cover and I want to really jack these fish when I, when I get a bite. Um, usually sh shorter casts, though. I'm making shorter casts with it. And uh, I, love, I love throwing that jig, too. But uh, the thinner wire hook is is the best deal if you, you get one. Uh, what we used to call casting jigs, this jig I'm using... Um, is one that's not made anymore. It was made by Taboo Tackle, and this is what they called a casting jig. And a lot of guys don't even know the difference between a casting jig and a flipping jig, but it's basically thinner wire hook and fewer fiber weed guard strands. And it, by having fewer strands, it makes it easier to set the hook when you're swimming it in and you, you're not getting that thump. The other thing I do, and after a while it almost stays that way, I take the weed guard and I bend it and I open it up. So it makes it easier for uh, for the hook to, to penetrate. You can see this hook's not a real thick thick wire hook. Uh, it's a half ounce jig. And uh, you know that allows me more control casting and, and also how I'm, uh, uh, what depths I'm fishing and that kind of thing. So I could do a lot more with, with the heavier jig. Uh, the, the lighter jigs, they're okay. Uh, there, when that one hit it on the drop, that one hit it before it ever made it to the bottom. I just felt the slightest little tap on that when I made that long cast. And he's getting ready to jump. You want to jump? Go ahead, jump. Okay, good. He got that out of his system. All right, so uh, this one's not that big, but he's still. Hey, you know what? We're we're trying to catch fish with a swim jig, and we're doing okay with it. like stocky little guy. The other thing I do is I look into their mouths to see if I could see anything and I'm looking for either the tail of a bait fish or I'm looking for the little hairs that might be the antenna of a crawfish and the reason I do that is I want to see what they're not necessarily what they're eating but how they're eating if they've got a tail of a bait fish in there that means they're chasing I mean they got to be moving around to do that if they got the little hairs in there from the from the crawfish that means I got to slow down and get my bait on the bottom so that's a good indicator to me, and I'm always looking at that. I'm always, you know, even though my uh, experience tells me that with these conditions I can throw a moving lure, uh, I still want to be able to have some kind of affirmation that I'm doing the right thing. 
And a lot of times the affirmation is that you're catching fish. <laughs> but, but when you start adding factors together, uh, that, that adds up to, to more success. And, and again, uh, more affirmation that what you're doing is, uh, is working. I love low light conditions for, uh, for any kind of bait because the, the bass are gonna move around. They're, they will be around cover, whether it's wood or grass, because that's where their food is gonna be. But now they, they use it differently. Uh, when, it's, when it's cloudy, the bait fish are moving around a little bit, so the bass still use it as an ambush, but they also use it because that's where the bait fish might be located. So they're looking, they're looking at these spots, but when it's sunny, uh, everything's holding tight and uh, to cover. I mean, the bait fish are not swimming around, so the bass are more ambush. Uh, they're not out looking, uh, so you've got to really hit hard targets, but uh, whether it's grass or wood or rock or whatever it is that you're, you got around. Um, I, like, uh, I like it when it's cloudy because you can, you can move around because the fish are moving around. Another reason for this Gamma Edge fluorocarbon, less stretch, better hook sets, uh, you know, I don't, the fact that it sinks might also help keep the bait down a little bit. Um, but, uh, I just like it. I, I like the hook sets that I get with it. Cast. If you come fishing with me, you're going to make a thousand casts that day. If you catch 50 fish, which is like probably not going to happen, uh, that means 950 times that you made a cast, you didn't get a bite. That's 950 times. Use that as practice. Figure out what that is. That's a rock, that's a stick, that's grass, that's a rock, that's grass, that's wood, that's a rock, that's paper, that's scissors, no, that's something else. But give yourself the opportunity to use that 950 cast to learn what is not a bite. So when something different happens, that, you know, that 50 bites a day that you're going to get, that you're ready for them. Uh, it's, it's, it's the weirdest sport around because in baseball, they say, oh, the hardest thing in the world is to hit a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Well, yeah, but you're, you're standing there and you've only got, like, what, a, a second or two to, to prepare and, and, and to be ready for it, and you know it's going to be coming or it could be coming. With bass fishing, it's like you make a thousand casts, you don't know which one of those is going to be a bite. So you've really got to learn what a bite is, but more importantly, what is not a bite. Remember that. There we go. That guy, right when I ticked the top of the grass, he came up and got it. And uh, a thing I like about a swim jig is they're usually pretty decent fish. I mean, it's not a giant, but, you know, we'll take them. Um, it's... It's just one of those baits you've got to throw. You've got to throw this bait. Isolated clumps of grass, especially the deeper ones. Oh, they're a gold mine. You gotta, you gotta work those things, and work them, and work them, and work them. Mark them, work them, because we're we're right here. You see that? We're right there, and and we're got we got grass all around us here. So this is a. Uh, pretty good little spot a little bit shallower but it's got deep water all the way around it it's got grass on it not much of a chop now kind of dropped sun's coming out now that's not to say we won't keep catching them i mean we'll catch them it's just that <laughs> they're going to be a little deeper in the grass and you're going to have to get this bait more in the grass which is not a problem because it likes the grass uh, if you really are serious about fishing a lot of grass, they make jigs that are grass jigs. They've got a pointed nose and they come through the grass a little bit better. This one here is kind of a hybrid. It's basically a casting jig. But um, I like it because I'll fish it around wood and grass and it works pretty good. But if I was just fishing grass all day long, I'd probably have a, a grass jig on the Potomac. I'll, I'll throw a grass jig. It's got more of a pointed nose and and it'll come through real good. At this lake, because there's so much wood, I wanna be able to bounce off the wood too instead of like getting stuck. Don't like getting stuck. Trying to slow it down, contact that grass. I haven't hit the grass here in a while. If you don't hit that grass, see, you know, it's like they're down in that grass and they see, they see something snatching the grass like I just hit it right there a couple of times 
they see something snatching that grass and it you know if there's silt or something on the grass it shakes it off it looks like maybe a crawfish is moving around or a bait fish or something feeding or <clears throat> it definitely gets their attention more so than just something swimming over their heads so getting in that grass is always a good idea in the grass in the grass in the grass into the fish see what I said about snapping it oops that guy got but by snapping the bait you'll trigger you'll trigger strikes wish I brought that one in but um, that just shows you in the grass snap in the grass snap and that is what's going to trigger a strike every time I get my jig out of the water I give it a quick visual inspection I know what I'm looking for I'm looking for my claws from my trailer are they both still there is the trailer in place it's not going to ball up and the other thing i'm looking for is do i have grass on it if i have grass on it then i can make a decision on how to get rid of it i can either pick it off by hand i don't like to smack my baits in the water I usually tear something up or messes up my bait <clears throat> so i'll maybe let it go sink about two or three feet give it a little snap of the rod and it usually comes off or uh, if it's a small enough piece, I'll cast it and it'll usually come off and I can see it. If it comes off, then, then I don't go to the next step, which is if it lands in the water and still has grass on it, like that had grass on it and I didn't see it fly off. So I'm going to give it a couple of pops at the end of that cast to see if I can shake that grass off. Uh, the rod I'm using is a, um, it's a seven foot two, medium heavy. So I still want a rod that's gonna, you know, get that, get that hook in the fish. This rod at medium heavy is soft enough to where I can still make accurate casts if I need to, if I want to. Um, but it's seven two. It gives you that extra distance so that you can, you can cast with it pretty far. And I do like long casts with this. I definitely like long casts. If the grass is super, super thick or a fish is super heavy wood cover, then I change my line, I beef up the line, and, and I beef up the rod a little bit more. If I'm going for super accurate cast, I might shorten that rod to seven foot. Something gives you a little more accuracy. That last fish hit it, and I had to catch up to him. I mean, he started coming towards the boat. He wanted to get here in a hurry. That's why you go with a faster reel. I always try to go with the fastest reel I can use. I I remember back, way back when, three eight to one. Are you kidding me? Five to one? That was what the industry standard was, five to one. Then it became like six three to one, and then it went to seven and eight. Um, <clears throat> no reason not to have a fast reel, unless you're really, really deep cranking, and then it's like maybe six, maybe five. But not three eight to one, and so many of those Shimano Corrados, the guys bought them slow rolling. Oh yeah, you could slow roll. Fish is faster. <laughs> they pick up that bait, start to move. You're gonna wish you had a, a reel twice that speed. Cast parallel to what I see. I'm guessing that grass comes out another ten feet. Electronics is kind of saying the same thing, so I'm making my cast parallel to that grass edge. But I'm out about another 10, 15 feet because I want to get to the real edge, not the edge that I can see. And believe it or not, these fish out here probably never see a lure because most people have their boats on top of them and <clears throat> aren't fishing deep enough or further out enough to get to these fish. Sometimes when I'm, it's kind of like, you know, you know a quickly where you get two targets with one bullet. Uh, I try to do the same thing with my cast. I try to put in two strike zones with one cast. It's like a Quigley cast. All right, this guy came out of the grass. He said, I wanna come aboard. So come aboard there, Bassie. Okay. You know, after you've caught a bunch of fish, one of the things you should do is check your check your line. Um, you know that fish, he uh, pretty guy. 
But check your line, like in this area here. And if I feel any kind of nicks at all, I'll change it. Or if I'm fishing around a lot of wood, I'll um, I'll change it. Change it, I mean retie. <clears throat> wow, I love the swim jig even more now. I, I just love this bait. It's it, it's a it's a really easy bait to throw, but like I said, a lot of guys won't throw because they can't feel it. The idea is to keep it in the grass, snap it out of the grass. It works when it's cloudy. It works when it's sunny. It's the best bait I've ever had around grass. Sure, you can let it go to the bottom and fish it like a regular jig, but as you saw today, all of our fish were caught while we were swimming this thing, either by wood or snapping it out of grass. So I'm Captain Steve Chaconis. Thanks for watching the National Bass Fishing Show. Tell your friends about us and please subscribe.